Last night, the Utah Jazz defeated the Hornets 119-111, but the star of the show for Utah wasn't all-star starter Lowry Markkanen or rookie sensation Walker Kessler, although Kessler did play well. It was fourth-year wing Talon Horton Tucker, who dropped 37 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds. He's really turned it on as of late, averaging 27-7-5 on 64% true shooting in his last three games. His production has shot up as of late with more opportunity, after only being given about 18 minutes per game for the season. For most of his young career, THT was known mostly for being a meme on NBA Twitter. It was often stated that the Lakers viewed him way too highly, as they were known to offer him in a second round pick for star level players, as well as often refusing to use him as a throw in for big trades. He was mainly a bench rotational piece for LA, only starting in 24 games in his three seasons there. However, he did show some solid scoring outbursts, having eight 20 point games, with one of them being a 40 point outburst. He even raised his average to 10 points per game with the Lakers in 2022. He was a second round pick that had drastically outperformed expectations of him, so it's easy to understand why the Lakers were so attached. However, after all the fanfare and memes about him, he was dealt to the Jazz in a deal that netted the Lakers Patrick Beverly, which is weird considering the Lakers perceived view of his upside. Many thought he could see a rise in production in Utah, but for most of the season he's been somewhat of an afterthought. But he's no afterthought now. And the craziest part? He's still only 22 years old, even though it feels like he's been around forever. So how good can THT become? Is he a future star for the Utah Jazz? To try and answer that question, let's look at Tucker's career and season so far before examining this recent stretch. Before we get into the upside of Talon Horton Tucker, if you enjoy my content and watch a few videos of mine, think about subscribing. 96% of my viewers are actually not subscribed, so if you watch me before and enjoy the content, drop a sub and comment down below. It really helps the channel. Let's start with his rookie year with the Lakers. Tucker was selected in the second round of the 2019 NBA Draft with the 46th pick to the Orlando Magic, who subsequently traded him to the Lakers. The team already had veterans like KCP, Kuzma, Danny Green, Avery Bradley, and Jared Dudley, so THD's path to the rotation wasn't an easy one. To make things worse, he suffered a foot injury in his rookie season. He would only end up playing in 6 games in the regular season, but would be given 13.5 minutes per game in them, making him a surprising lower end rotational guy as a rookie. He even was given the start in one of them. He put up around 6 points a game and wasn't necessarily anything special. In 2 games in the playoffs he would score 14 points, and by the end of them he was an NBA champion, as the Lakers went on to win it all. He clearly worked hard in the offseason and came back as a much more important rotational player. He was given 20 minutes per game in year 2, and even started 4 of his 65 games. He averaged 9 points, 3 assists, and 3 rebounds per game and even shot 46% from the field. He even had two 20 point games towards the end of the season and looked like an important player for the team going forward. His best season yet would come in year 3, as he was given 25 minutes per game and started 19 of his 60 games. He averaged 10 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. He was clearly a valuable rotation player for the Lakers, and was a bright spot among the team's struggles. He had 6 20 point games on the season, capping it off with a 40 point performance on April 7th. He had clearly improved and had legitimate scoring talent, but some felt he hadn't taken enough of a jump and the Lakers must have felt the same way as they dealt him in the offseason. A large cause of this divorce is likely his shooting inconsistency, with him shooting a respective 31%, 28%, and 27% from three in his three seasons with the Lakers. The team already lacked shooting as well as defense, and likely saw getting Patrick Beverly in the deal as a way to improve those areas as well as get some veteran leadership. When he was dealt to the Jazz, many expected THT to become a 15 plus point per game scorer, as the team had dealt their two stars in the offseason. However, that hasn't really happened. With the emergence of Larry Markkinen and the rise of Jordan Clarkson, the team didn't need scoring as badly as many thought, which has led to THT having the lowest minutes per game since his rookie season at 18 a night. For the year, he's averaging 9 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists per game, the same numbers he put up in his sophomore season. 
Many were disappointed and had slightly given up on and forgotten about Tucker. However, due to a recent finger injury to Jordan Clarkson, he's been given more opportunity. The team needs the scoring he provides now. That brings us to his last three games. It is a small sample, but is showing us the upside that many thought he had. Over that time, he's averaging 27 points, 7 assists, and 5 rebounds per game, while shooting a great 55% from the field, 39% from 3, and 88% from the free throw line. He's been phenomenal, and in a night where star Larry Markkinen shot 3 of 22 from the field, the Jazz still won, thanks to the outburst from Tucker last night. He had 37 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds in the victory. For most of his career, he was viewed as almost strictly a scorer, but he has shown some nice improvements in both his playmaking and rebounding as of late. He's always had the scoring ability, but his biggest problems have been one-dimensionality and consistency. If he can add the other aspects to his game and keep up his play, we'd be looking at a legitimate all-star. 27-7 gets you in the all-star game. Will his production slip back down? Probably but he feels like a player who can be a legit 20-point-per-game scorer if given the opportunity. After hitting on surprises Lowry Markkinen and Walker Kessler already, it looks as if the Jazz may have found another gem for the core going forward, and he's only 22. He has a lot of time to improve and get better. Lowry just made his first All-Star at 25, and Brunson saw his jump at 26 as well as Mikal Bridges. THT has a ton of time for growth, and is making a real case to be a starter for Utah going forward. He's been great. Talon Horton Tucker was treasured by the Lakers for years, and seen as a player who could develop into a top tier scorer. He got memed to death for the Lakers' attachment to him, and gained a lot of popularity because of it. However, due to a trade to the Jazz last offseason and a dip in minutes, many had forgotten about him. However, as a second round pick and the 66th ranked player in his high school class, THT is used to being overlooked. He hasn't let it bother him, he's just quietly continued to work and wait for his opportunity. And with an injury to 20 point per game scorer Jordan Clarkson, Tucker has been given that opportunity as of late, and he's making the most of it. He's averaging 27, 7, and 5 over his last three games, capped off with a 37 point, 10 assist, 8 rebound performance last night. He's playing efficiently and growing the other parts of his game outside of scoring. He's only 22 years old, he has plenty of time to continue to improve. He's showing what upside he has and looks like a player who could develop into an all star level guy for the Jazz down the line. He's looking like their most recent surprise find, after having massive hits with Lowry Markin and Walker Kessler already this season. Don't sleep on THT. Thanks for watching. I'm Herm. Have a good one.